When drawing a Lewis structure, one of the first things you want to identify is are you dealing with an ionic compound or are you dealing with a covalent compound? Ionic compounds are relatively easy to identify because you're looking for a metal bonded to a nonmetal. And the idea is we deal with the Lewis structures of ionic compounds and covalent compounds a little bit differently. With an ionic compound, you still want to draw the Lewis symbol for each element. So this is where you want to start. But drawing the Lewis structure is actually going to involve the full movement of electrons. And remember, we're doing this to form electron configurations similar to a noble gas. We want to form full electron subshells. During this, we are expecting electrons to be moved. So when an electron leaves, we are expecting one species to have a positive charge and we are expecting the other species to gain an electron and that's going to cause it to have a negative charge. And it's this interaction between a positive and negative charge that creates our ionic compound. So here's an example where I ask for you to draw the Lewis structure for KCl. The first thing you want to do is start with the Lewis symbol for both of these species. Potassium has one valence electron, Chlorine has seven valence electrons. Then you want to move electrons to fulfill the octet of both of these species. So it's very easy to see here with chlorine that if it gains one more electron, it's going to have eight valence electrons. And that's what a noble gas has, and that's what we want to gain. So during this process, an electron leaves potassium and moves completely to chlorine. So here an electron is leaving potassium. That's going to give our potassium a positive charge. Our chlorine is gaining an electron. That is going to give it a negative charge. And it's this positive and negative interaction is what creates our ionic bond. It does this, once again, to create an electron configuration similar to a noble gas. So even though we remove a one valence electron here for potassium, in doing that, it exposes the noble gas core that is left when we remove this one valence electron. So potassium plus has an electron configuration that is the same for argon. And here chlorine, you can see the eight electrons around it. Once it gains the one electron, it has an electron configuration similar to argon. So this goes back to the electron configurations of anions and cations that we have previously discussed. So it is possible to have more than one positive charge or negative charge inside of an ionic compound. A good example of this is calcium chloride. Once again, I want to start with the Lewis symbols. So chlorine still has seven valence electrons. And in this case, calcium has two valence electrons. So it's pretty clear that calcium wants to give up these two valence electrons to get to its noble gas interior. And once again, chlorine with seven wants to gain an electron. And to form the ionic bond, that's exactly what happens. Calcium gives up both of its valence electrons. It gives one to one chlorine, the other to the other chlorine. In doing that, the chlorines become negatively charged. The calcium gains a plus two charge and this forms our ionic bonds. And in doing this, every one of our atoms gains a noble gas configuration.